Ja, vielen herzlichen Dank. Ich will den, äh, freue mich riesig, heute hier sein zu können. Ich ähm, werde den Vortrag aber auf Englisch machen, weil ja bei uns ganz viele internationale St Mitarbeiterinnen sind. Es switch to English now. And um, so maybe I can have the first slide. So we are super excited to, no, no first slide yet. We remain super excited. Um, that our proposal Microbiomes Drive Planetary Health, or in short, Microplanet, was um, selected after a multi-step procedure involving many reviewers and hearing in front of an international jury by the FWF as one of the five clusters of excellence in Austria. And it's my great pleasure to just present to you now a quick overview of what we will be doing, who we are in the next few minutes. We are from seven different institutions, um, in Austria from four federal states. And the beating heart for, of this initiative is the University of Vienna and the Center for Microbiology and Environmental System Science with 18 researchers in this cluster of excellence. And I have the pleasure to act as the director of research and to represent our university in the board of directors together with Christina Kaiser. The other Board of Director members are Christine Meusel-Eichinger. She's also here in the audience today, which is great. And she's uh, our Deputy Director from the Medical University of Graz. Angela Sesic from the IET. Um, Alexander Moschen from the Johannes Kepler uh, University in Linz. Bernhard Lendl um, from uh, the Technical University of Vienna, and Leonid Satsanov from the ISTA, and Andreas Bergthaler from the Center of Molecular Medicine. So this is the team of the Board of Directors, but um, altogether we are 30 uh, researchers from these seven institutions uh, doing this together, and we come from very different disciplines, from microbiology, from ecology, from chemistry, from neuroscience, from bioinformatics. So it's a broad, um, broad group of people, but all together we are interested in this topic of microbiomes. What is their role in driving planetary health and why is this so important? Because we live on a microbial planet. So every ecosystem on our planet, every organism, all plants, all humans, all animals are colonized by microorganisms. And these specific communities are called microbiomes. They are microbiomes. Microbes are the oldest inhabitants of our planet. So, and they have evolved intimate relationships with all other organisms once they evolved, with animals, plants, humans, and they are super abundant on, and their diversity is super perplexing. So in a gram of soil, if you look here now, there's no real soil in there, but in a, in a gram of soil in your flower pot, you have up to 100,000 different bacterial species. And in a few handfuls of soil, you have more microbial species than humans on Earth. But the true impact of this microbiome research does not lie in cataloging this perplexing diversity, but in understanding the functions and the services these communities provide for preserving and restoring planetary health. And they are... If without these microbes, you can also say it in other words, with the, a quote from Louis Pasteur, life would not long remain possible on our planet. It will turn into a black planet, the green planet, in the absence of microbes. So it's crystal clear that microbes are essential for planetary health, which is defined as the health of the human civilization and all the systems in which human civilization is embedded in. But shockingly, if you look at many planetary health research initiatives or at this figure from modified from Lancet planetary health, microbes do not even occur because it's so difficult to study these hypercomplex communities. They are essential but ignored often. And we want to change this and add microbes to these pictures because they are important for all these aspects and for all players. And they define also in large parts how this whole world system responds to its many stressors. Like, like global change or growth of the human population. And this topic, microbiomes, and it, their important role for planetary health is the core topic of our cluster of excellence. I have selected two examples from our 16 work packages, mm -hmm. just to give you a little bit of flavor of what we 
plan to do. And these two examples are one from environmental health and one from human health. And they should illustrate the importance of microbes for these systems, but on the other hand also show which re what research gaps still exist in these fields. So the environmental health example is the thawing permafrost. You all know that due to global warming, permafrost is thawing, that there are a lot of organic matter becomes accessible for the soil microbiomes. They produce, due to their stimulated activity, a lot of greenhouse gases, additional greenhouse gases, and in the climate change feedback loop, more uh, the t temperature is further increased and more permafrost is thawing. On the human health side, the example I want to show is the drug microbiome network. We are the most medicated generation of humans. But, and the efficiency and the side effects of drugs vary a lot between individuals. So each of you will respond different to a pharmaceutical treatment and ov averaged over all drugs, only up to 40% of the patients do not benefit from a treatment. And it's well known that some drugs, for example, the antibiotics, alter our healthy gut microbiomes, causing many short and long-term health consequences. So this is established knowledge. But recently, in both fields, a lot of exciting insights were made. For example, in a study where one of us, Andreas Richter, was involved, it was shown that in the thawing permafrost, due to an overlooked interaction, with plant roots, these microbiomes will produce, unfortunately, up to 40% more greenhouse gases till 2100 than previously predicted. It's a so-called microbiome priming effect. The roots stimulate further the activity of the microbes in this system. And this affects large parts of our world, as shown here on this map. All the yellow parts are affected by this microbiome priming effect. On the drug microbiome side, we lack a holistic understanding of this drug microbiome interactions. For example, most patients do not take one pharmaceutical, right? They take many different ones. And how does this combination of pharmaceuticals affect our drug, uh, uh, the, the microbiomes? And um, for, uh, furthermore, it has been shown that about two-thirds of the human-targeted drugs, so not talking antibiotics now, are biotransformed by um, the microbes in our gut. And they are either activated by this or deactivated or even toxified. And so, so gut microbiomes interact with drugs and drugs change also our gut microbiomes and cause many side effects. So each of us will respond in a personalized way to these drugs and we need to better understand this. Therefore, we will try to close these knowledge gaps which still exist in MicroPlanet to better understand these systems and to make use of them for the benefit of mankind. For example, we will perform um, controlled permafrost thawing and warming experiments in situ, on site, to better understand the emerging interactions in these microbiomes with viruses, for example, and with protozoa to more accurately predict greenhouse gas emissions from these systems and to incorporate then explicitly microbial mechanisms in Earth system models, which are essential to predict the trajectories of global warming, for example. And on the drug microbiome host network, I've already mentioned, we want to study how do combinations of drugs affect our gut microbiome? And we will fo make a focus on the small intestine. Usually these studies are done with fecal samples, but the interaction really occurs in the small intestine, where also the drug absorption happens. And this is a research focus of our cluster of excellence. The goal is to select the right drugs for the right patients by knowing their gut microbiome in order to heal more patients. And in the long run, we want to develop personalized and drug-specific probiotics to increase therapeutic effects and to decrease side effects. Looking at these systems, we have identified three big unknowns. What do we still don't know of the systems? Why do these research gaps still exist? Because we don't sufficiently well understand microbiome interactions. These are tiny, 10 micrometer tiny organisms, hypercomplex, which interact with each other and with their hosts. And we need to understand these interactions better. We need to better understand how these interaction networks also are modified by perturbations, for example, warming or exposure to chemicals. In order to have 
improved predictions to be able to predict how such a microbiome in the thawing permafrost will behave and to design targeted interventions in order to manipulate these communities in a targeted and successful way. And therefore, we have made these three big unknowns, our research themes in our cluster of excellence. So microbiome interactions, perturbations, and interventions. And we have assembled 30 uh, scientists who are either experts in the environmental field or in the health microbiome field or method specialists to tackle these research questions. But unfortunately in Austria, like everywhere else, environmental microbiome research and medical microbiome research are very much separated. And although they all deal with the same problems, and this is a method-driven field, but if you look in the literature, often the methods developed in one of the fields takes up to, or concepts, it takes up to 10 years before they are implemented in the other field. Due to lacking synergies and interactions between these research communities, and it's our dedicated goal to tear down this wall between green and red microbiome research, and therefore we have designed our research project such that in each project, a program such that in each project, experts from the green, red, and method field will directly collaborate together. And this has allowed us to assemble a research program which none of the participating institutions could have assembled on its own, and which we consider to be exemplary also internationally. And to achieve these research goals, and we just heard about the importance of education, right? Our trainee community will be essential. This is a considerable size of trainees. We have most master students, PhD students, postdocs, junior faculty, which we will have in our cluster of excellence, and we will harmonize the training across the seven institutions at all levels in order to grow these trainees into the future leaders to train the next generation of scientists in this microbiomes planetary health research fields. Because we are convinced, the whole team, that our trainees will be the most impactful legacy of our cluster of excellence. Finally, I would like to spend a few words on communication and transfer also a topic in the discussion just a few minutes ago. This is also of central importance for us. So we have uh, teamed up with many partners. I just list here a few, the Natural History Museum, the Kinder Uni, Florian Freistetter, who will serve as a science patron for us. And we will develop new initiatives to uh, get access to the largest possible audience for these important topics. For example, with the Natural History Museum, the Deck 50 will be one thing we will exp uh, uh, explore together, where people can explore then in this, this experimental space, microbiomes and planetary health in a joyful way. There are quite many visitors in this Deck 50. And Florian Freistetter has quite some audience. He's a well-known science communicator in the German-speaking country. He will serve specifically as our science patron, develop podcasts with us, teach us to bet how to better communicate um, the, uh, uh, our science content to the public. And um, in addition, and this was also a topic in the discussion a few minutes ago, we will install a microbiome policy advisory board where 10 of our members will, uh, who cover all major research areas in this field will be represented to optimally interact with policy and decision makers. And some of us have um, made uh, a lot of experience in this topic during the pandemic, and we will use this just to push uh, also this ad advisory role of the cluster of excellence during the next 10 years. So in conclusion, MicroPlanet will integrate and transform two of the most important research fields of the 21st century, microbiome science and planetary health. And by doing so, it will unite environmental and medical um, microbiome research. We will build an Austrian school of microbiome science which will shape the field in Austria and hopefully serve as a model also internationally. We are convinced that with MicroPlanet we will establish Austria at the international forefront of microbiome research and in five years we are very optimistic that we will be able to much better predict microbiome functions under changing environmental conditions and this will help us to design targeted intervention strategies to modify these microbiomes for the benefit of mankind. And these two topics, prediction and interventions, 
will then also be our focal points for the second phase. We will be evaluated after five years and we will focus on this then to get hopefully funding also for five more years. And with this, I would like to thank many, many people. This was a real team effort, not only of the 30 people involved and of all the institutions. We would not have achieved this without our fantastic administration team, led by Anina müller strassenek who supported us extremely well. The whole university, many people supported us. We had a mock jury which trained with us, Barbara Schober, Silvia Kritzinger, Nikolaus Forger, Lukas Zinner, Lukas Zinner. Michi Stampfer supported us, the WWTF gave us money, Manuela Baccarini gave us feedback. So a lot of people, I hope I didn't forget anyone, um, really um, provided feedback, input, and that was a very, very nice uh, team effort. And um, two special thanks at the end. One goes to Andreas Richter, who is for me the and for all of us, I think, the ninth uh, board of director member because he really had so much input to this proposal. We spent days and nights together writing this proposal with many, many others. When I called him last week, he did send me this picture. Uh, he's in Congo currently taking a soil profile, so it's really sort of almost live when he heard about the positive decision. He sends his best regards to you. He would like to celebrate with us, but I'm sure there will be many opportunities to do so. And um, another special thanks. These were quite uh, intense and exciting uh, times, the, but during the last two years, I had, a, as always, but I had a lot of support of my wonderful family, my partner Susanne and the four kids, Leni, Chuli, David and Daniel, as well as our dog and our three, this is a drawing from Julie, our youngest daughter, uh, three guinea pigs, Rosie, Flocke and Lumpy. And here, unfortunately, hidden by myself, there is also a recently diseased guinea pig, Schmatzi, who is in heaven and still <laughs> supporting us from heaven. So thank you. They were really a, a wonderful support. And um, yeah, with this, thank you. And let's celebrate together a little bit. Thank you.